Hello everybody, Easy here. PS3 on Android is finally here, with a few caveats. PS3 on Android has long been a dream of people in the community, and at one point an impossible meme. Thanks to the kind work of the devs over at RPCS3, with developments on their ARM port, it's finally possible to run on Android. In this video, I will be looking at a couple of the latest ways to run RPCS3 on Android with the projects APS3E and Olympus. Disclaimer as we start, these are not officially endorsed by RPCS3. Do not go to their Discord or forums asking for support. These are community forks and are in their very early stages. Also, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to leave a like or maybe subscribe for more. If you want to see more videos like this, check out my channel and maybe consider supporting on YouTube, Patreon, or Ko-Fi. Olympus. I began testing a few days ago by running RPCS3 ARM through Termux with Termux X11, which although impressively did work, did not give the desired results. Games would often hang and crash, and it was very slow to unpack games. When games would run, they were often very slow and graphically broken. Controls were limited to keyboard and mouse only, and control input was finicky, which is something I haven't noticed before when using RPCS3 on PC. It was not user-friendly to set up, but that's a flaw of Termux, and not this project. Overall, I'd still consider this impressive, as it was one of the first real steps towards having a taste of RPCS3 on Android. It's definitely an impressive preview at what can be done in the future. If you'd like to take a look at setting this up for yourself, I'll link my visual guide in the description. It will be up shortly before or after this video is. APS3E Now, the latest way to play RPCS3 on Android at the time of me writing is much more user-friendly. However, it also has much lower compatibility. APS3E is a newly released emulator by the dev AENU, and it shows a lot of promise. Rather than running through an external container like Winlay, this iteration runs natively off the Android operating system as an Android APK port. This means there's no need for Termix, no need for external tools, and its performance has the possibility to be much better in the future than other containers. Now, how exactly does this work under the hood? Well, at the time of me writing, the developer has said that he will release the full source code for a price. This is not a decision I agree with, as it breaks licenses. However, I can understand his frustration and viewpoint. For the time, we can't say exactly how it works for sure. However, another developer I have worked with before for NetherSX2, Trixarian, helped me review the code as I was doing testing, and we found it to be a bit of a merge between RPCS3's ARM port and the Android framework developed by Vita 3 k This needs more looking into, but as for our initial findings, that's what I can report. Now, as for the developer seemingly hiding the code behind a paywall, at the moment this is confirmed to break RPCS3's license, as it is a free, open source program. If it's also found to use the Vita 3K framework as we suspect, it would be in violation of that as well. I won't add any input, however I need to state those for clarity. Also, as a community, do not send any negativity towards the creator. It's better to use that energy productively. But, how's the compatibility? At the time of me writing, I've barely been able to get any games to launch. The important thing is that games even work at all, and with future optimizations, this has a chance to be the first real build of a PS3 emulator for Android. A common bug is some titles not initializing the packages and having a black screen, and crashing when given controller input. Another one is titles hanging on the final percentage when displaying 100% of packages loaded. I tested titles from Sony's classics like Little Big Planet, PlayStation All Stars, and The Last of Us, to third party titles like Mortal Kombat, Skate 2, and Mirror's Edge. From retro titles like Wipeout HD or Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer, to timeless titles like Minecraft and Terraria. I gave it a good library of titles to attempt. Some of my first working finds include Terraria, The Simpsons Game, and Mirror's Edge. Full tests will also be uploaded to Ozone Modifications Group, so check out that channel and full tests below. Terraria performed fine, as it is a retro 2D title, however the controls were foreign to me. Definitely worth calling in-game though. 
fellow tester and content creator literally Anna was able to get Castle Crashers working in-game remarkably well. Link to her socials down below. The Simpsons game ran surprisingly well. Once you get past the initial menu shaders and a choppy cutscene, I'd gauge by eyeball that the scenes were able to hit full speed, and the graphical bugs honestly aren't the worst I've ever seen for an emulator. Mirror's Edge was able to go in-game, however controls were bugged and I wasn't able to progress through the tutorial. It felt like I was Chell in Portal 2 with extra brain damage. Hey, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just, you just jumped. But never mind. Say Apple. Apple. Okay, you know what? That's close enough. All I could do was jump in place. Once the textures did load, I was impressed with the visuals, though. Plants vs. Zombies went in-game and performed well with minimal graphical glitches and choppy audio. Some titles could hit menu or play cutscenes, but then would crash going in-game. Watchmen The End Is Nigh was able to play the intro correctly but the program froze when loading in-game. Bioshock did the same, but the load on my system was so bad that it OOM'd and crashed my recording software and UI. It's a good thing that I'm writing this in the winter, because my phone could be used as a space heater right now. One downside of having to unpack such large titles is another one commonly encountered with programs like WinLater, where it will use a large amount of system resources and take large amounts of time. Be aware your phone has the possibility to overheat or throttle like crazy in some cases. Controls being hit or miss is also a deal breaker in some games, like you could see in Mirror's Edge. I hope this is addressed in the future. My thoughts. This emulator is the most user-friendly way to play PS3 games on Android so far. The downside to this ease of use and more accurate emulation than prior methods is that the compatibility is much lower than containers. Once a game does run though, it seems to run impressive for initial release. If you can look beyond low compatibility and some license issues and sketchy practices with at least one other emulator, this is an incredible first release and a great preview of what's to come for RPCS3 on Android in the future. I just hope the emulator optimizations and behind-the-scenes behavior improve in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and consider subscribing for more content like this. If someone you know might be interested in the video, be sure to share it with them. What were your favorite apps shown here? Start a discussion with others in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your games!